Rob, Super Rugby? Yeah. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> so yeah, who would have thought today? Eh? No South African sides in the semi-finals. The Stormers, I guess we don't have to review that game too much. We all know that they played terribly. Um, possibly a couple of distractions uh, last minute, you know, Dwayne Vermeulen's sort of little holiday to France mm -hmm. and Skullberger pulling out at the last minute. Um, let's just look ahead. Uh, well, we'll speak about the World Cup in a, in a minute, but just um, the conference format. Um, a lot of talk about it, again, sort of stinging South African sides <coughs> um, with the amount of traveling that, that, I don't know. I mean, what, what is your take on the overall performance of the South African sides? Um, I think why I, they performed so badly this year? I, I think that the uh, the big problem uh, is is it all comes down really to the the exodus of, of talent from from mm. our shores. Um, <coughs> I think from now on we're going to have a situation where increasingly, rather than decreasingly, our, our South African franchises are going to be always kind of building um, rather than uh, sort of you know having completed a house if you like, um, because we're going to keep losing players. Uh, the Stormers classic case in point now. Uh, failed at their first uh, final series hurdle again mm. and you sort of think well can they be any better next year and you have to start already suspecting well perhaps not because they're, they're shedding more players to, to overseas uh, we saw on Saturday as you were saying you know, uh, the absence of Dwayne Vermeulen uh, controversial though his, his build up week had been mm. um, he was a big miss uh, for, the, for the final because he really is a big sort of physical mm. sort of go to presence and Skulk Berger um, absolutely immense with his, merc his work rate mm. um, you know he, that gets taken for granted sometimes and when both of them pulled out uh, it just looked as though um, you know the, the, the plot had just sort of been, been crumpled up or, or uh, abandoned um, they looked nervous they looked tentative um, they, they were all over the show. You could just see them mentally. The Stormers uh, didn't seem to have the self-belief, and I thought the Cape Town public also uh, mm. looked as though they didn't have the belief. Uh, I mean, a very poor crowd for a, a knockout phase game. I mean, we've seen the Stormers get 50,000 gates for um, you know, ordinary season matches yeah. in the past, um, and here they, they struggled to get uh, you know, even close to the 30,000 mark for, a, for a, a major game. And you know, now further players um, leaving the sort of sinking South African ship, if you like, because Katrakilis is off. Karitza is off, um, Dwayne Vermeulen is off, um, one or two others. Um, so a lot of experience um, being shared um, at a time when the Stormers actually need to improve, not regress. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for a lot of the South African franchises. Um, you mentioned the, the conference system. Things will change again next year, mm -hmm. uh, given that we, uh, we sort of expand Super Rugby uh, all over again. Uh, the one blessing is that uh, in some ways the, um, the, sort of the, the South African um, uh, section which will get lumped in with the South American side, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, is going to be uh, considerably weaker than the Antipodean one. Um, and we're going to do a lot of sort of, um, uh, sort of almost incestuous play uh, um, among ourselves, which, is, which is, um, has benefits and, and disadvantages because uh, uh, it's it just the, the sort of artificiality of the system is, is, is coming home to roost. Mm. Uh, I don't think the public are, are very happy with the way Super Rugby is going. Uh, the fact that we're going to have six South African franchises next year uh, makes our challenge look collectively even less um, likely to, to flourish. Um, so I, I think with there's, there's bad times ahead for South Africa in Super Rugby generally. And it won't necessarily translate to the box. Um, we mustn't mm. forget that I think the Springboks can still muster from abroad and at home um, a, a, a credible enough uh, squad for the World Cup and mm. the championship before it. Um, but uh, Super Rugby... Uh, I, I think South African rugby is, is, is in relative tatters for Super Rugby. I, I don't see a South African win in Super Rugby again uh, anytime soon. Mm. Karen, what was your take on, on, on the defeat this weekend and just what it means <coughs> for South African rugby as a whole in a World Cup year particularly? Yeah, look, I, I agree with Rob. I think South African rugby has almost reached its lowest point, certainly in the last sort of 12 years since the last time a South African, no South African team made the semi-finals. Obviously that year we went on in 2003 Rugby World Cup I think he knocked out in the quarterfinals. And uh, honestly, the problem with this year is when you look at the Rugby World Cup draw, mm. we'll finish w probably top of our group. Then we're going to have to play whoever comes second in the group that contains England, Australia, and Wales. I'm 100% sure on paper now we won't go into that match as favorite, no matter who we play. I just cannot see how this team, the South African players, turn their, their, themselves around based on Super Rugby form. 
you know, Heineke Mayer is going to have to pick experienced players. He's going to almost have to overlook mm. everything that's happened at Super Rugby for um, this season. He just simply, there is nobody who's put up their hand that hasn't already been, you know, captain in the green and gold. So he's going to go back to experience. The problem with South Africa always is our experienced players are so old. They're over the hill. I'm surprised he's, I would be shocked if he doesn't even give Bucky's daughter a call. You know, Victor Matfield. Farida Pri has not played rugby anywhere in the world for, I think, six months. Nobody's ever heard of him. I don't even know if he's alive. Honest <laughs> to God. He could be anywhere right now. And we're going to have to go back to him only because he's got experience and because there's nobody else that's put up their hand and that's the same in a number of positions look at the all black squad that they named this weekend they've picked five players who've never played before and they all form players i mean mm. they, they've got some tremendous depth coming through and we have to remember that they only pick players based in new zealand mm. if we only pick players based in south africa we might as well not turn up the rugby world cup there's no way we'd be competitive at all mm. we have to pick um, these overseas players and as Rob mentioned all this this exodus of players from all the, the, the provinces is is in part due to Saru allowing players to go overseas and then still pick them for South Africa. Yeah. Sure there might be some that still go who don't think they're they cut out to make it at the highest level and the lure of the, the pound, yen, euro is, is too strong but there would certainly be some that would stay and you know hope to then put on the, put on the green and gold. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's m massive issues for, for South African rugby. I just I don't see how we, d we turn it around. Y when you look at the play of the Stormers this weekend, the Brumbies came to, New to Newlands a couple of weeks ago and they lost um, thanks to mm -hmm. a missed penalty, a missed conversion late in the game. This weekend, they obviously did their homework. The Stormers went backwards. They showed that they are pretty much a two-man team, unfortunately, with Berger and Vermeulen, which, I again, you know, highlights the fact, you know, when we played against the, Storm uh, the Sharks in Durban in our last round robin match, we picked a B team. And the gulf between our A team and our B team is so vast. That Sharks team is one of the worst teams that have you know, represented mm. the Sharks in living memory. And yet they were far, far too good for our B team. Which always, it goes back to what I've been saying for many, many years now. We are so reluctant and scared to make changes to our team that nobody gets a chance to play. So when you play, when you make all these changes, the team, the players haven't played at that level before. And they're mm. suddenly like thrown into the, the spotlight, in the limelight, and they, they don't know how to perform. You, you make 14 more changes, and you lose one or two players, and that team doesn't look like they know what they're doing. Honestly, Damien Delendi was the only player that this morning can hold his head up high and say, I actually played a good game. I mean, we don't want to name too many players, but Dylan Lates, as, as Tank Lanning said on, on, on Twitter this week, he'll be praying for load shedding during the, the team <laughs> review because he was nowhere on Saturday. I've never mm -hmm. seen a player disappear and not stick to his position. I mean, Joe Tamani must yeah. have thought it was Christmas all at once. You know, three tries, he didn't even see where his uh, opponent was. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there was Sinatla playing... You know, he obviously hasn't uh, grasped the 15-man code yet. He's got speed to burn. But that means nothing at this level when yeah. you can't actually defend. And uh, Katrakidis, you know, all he can do is kick up and unders and kick at poles. I mean, I've never seen a, a flower. And they, unfortunately, there are far too many of them in South Africa who don't take the ball to the line. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's, it's the scrum of Nick White. We've had a go at Nick White for I don't know how many weeks for chirping and getting up our backs and all this sort of thing. He completely outplayed Nick Groom and Louis Schroeder when he came on. I mean, it was men against boys. There was, there was, uh, they scored six tries to, to one. The yeah. only try we got was an intercept try. So we did nothing to yeah. deserve that try. And we talked about this much vaunted Stormers defense. Six tries to one at Newlands with a South African ref. I mean, it, it, it was a shambles. I yeah. think we could go on and on and on. But, um, you know, it's a season's over from a Stormers point of view. And I don't think a minute too soon because I don't think we even deserve to, to be there. Just because of the conference, we, we, you know, we scored the seventh most number of points. And we still managed to host a, a quarterfinal, if you like. So, yeah, anyhow.